So let's learn how to download data from the Ocean Color website for use with CDAS. Um, the Ocean Color website is easily reached with your favorite browser. Um, if you go to the URL oceancolor.gsfc Goddard Space Flight Center dot NASA dot gov. Okay. Once there, you're presented with this web page. And in particular, we're interested in this data menu. If you hover over any of these, you get a submenu. But the data menu will lead you to the level one and two browser. So click that. And that opens up a new web page that is the Ocean Color search engine. This uh, you interact with by making a few settings and then uh, you will be presented with some search results. So let's get oriented with its elements. Up in this corner, um, you have some navigation buttons that let you pick uh, data types or categories, true color, chlorophyll, or SST. Uh, there are also some up, back, and forward arrows which will highlight once you have surfed somewhere uh, in the search um, hierarchy. Um, generally, you'll pick one of those. Uh, we're just going to use the true color uh, criterion here. Um, and then you would pick a date from this large area down here of months for each year. Now, uh, not all data is available for all years because not uh, all satellites have been in, in orbit for all those years. I'm going to simply uh, choose a recent month here, January of this year. And when I click that, you'll notice a few things changed. These three months will highlight the month you selected and the neighboring two months. And this map of the world is actually a composite of the data type you've selected over here uh, for all of that period of time, the entire month. So we can kind of see that uh, over this month there were generally clouds over these areas and so on. Uh, but uh, what I would then select is a uh, sensor a group of sensors, one or more sensors from this region of the screen over here. I don't tend to use these two criterion here that kind of narrow things down. Uh, and actually, I'm just going to uh, rely on the default selection of aqua modus for daytime passes. It's important to note that when I pick a date and then pick a sensor, if I change the date, it's going to reset the sensor back to this default of daytime modus aqua. So just be aware of that as you do your searching. All right, so having picked an entire month, I can focus in on a date by picking either a single day from its numeric uh, calendar location here, or the three symbol triplets uh, excuse me, the triplet symbols below the dates represent selecting an eight-day range. So the first eight days of the month are by clicking these any one of these uh, sets of symbols below the digits, the second week, and so on. I'm going to arbitrarily pick this uh, set of X's below the third week or the third eight-day window. So now this map changes even again. And I get an eight-day period beginning uh, on Friday, January 17th. So it didn't really matter which one of those X's that I chose down there. It picked that fixed eight-day window. Uh, notice it highlights the one that's selected and lets me pick other, other ones as well if I need to. So having picked uh, a, a week of, of data to search for, then typically I'm going to go choose my satellites. So I'm going to leave it at Modus Aqua. And then um, I'm going to pick an area. Now I can click on this map and get a general, uh, you know, area of the map. Um, you know, if I wanted the Gulf of Mexico, I could click in there. Or I can use this pre-selected uh, or predefined 
region list over here. So I'll scroll down and pick Gulf of Mexico and find swaths. Now having picked a, an eight day window of data, I'm going to get a fairly uh, large number of results. And this uh, window is the uh, result of, of the search, basically. Um, each one of these thumbnails here uh, is a, a satellite pass over the Gulf of Mexico uh, within the search criterion. This globe of the Earth down here kind of shows that the Gulf of Mexico is the region I've chosen. But it's important to notice these three digits here, which represent the fact that I have multiple pages of data results. I'm only displaying 10 at a time as shown up here, and that's fine. Just leave it at that and use these numbers to step through the various pages of data. I'm not seeing any really beautiful passes here, so I'm going to click uh, the two, and I get a bunch more thumbnails through time. Notice the dates are changing, 21st, 20th, 19th. So it on page one, I'm seeing the most recent of the eight-day window in, uh, on January 24th. If I click page three of the data, I'm only seeing those from the uh, beginning of that eight-day window. So looking here again at page two, what I noticed is that I've got a pretty nice pa pass here where the Gulf Coast at least is pretty free of clouds. The others uh, don't interest me, so I click on that. What you get as a result is the page for displaying a single uh, satellite data file or data pass, if you will. It's a granule. It's a five-minute chunk of the orbit of the satellite in my area of interest. And I get thumbnail views of it in true color, in chlorophyll and as uh, a sea surface temperature. These uh, are available in various formats of data up here in this list of links for this granule of data. Okay, and when I click on one of these, I'm going to download it. And notice the file sizes are from 20 megabytes up to 310 megabytes. So these can be large. The PDS file is very raw data off of the satellite. You're not going to use it. The level 1A file is calibrated, but requires that it be processed to level 2 to do any geophysical analysis. And unfortunately, it's very difficult uh, to be able to do that on a Windows computer. So we're going to go directly to the pre-built level 2 products. You have a LAC OC for ocean color. Uh, LAC refers to local area coverage. That's satellite jargon. Uh, you have an IOP or inherent optical properties file. And each one of these, uh, and then thirdly, a level two SST. The NRT refer, refers to near real time. Um, these uh, contain multiple bands of information, multiple spectral views of the or, or processed uh, products of the single five minute granule. So if we click on one of these, we will download a file. Now it's important to note, for example, if you look down here at my status bar while I'm hovering over one of these, you'll see the actual file name that it's going to download. An NC file is a net CDF. It's a special science data file format that contains multiple bands of information and enough metadata for you to be able to sort of figure out what to do with it. CDAS can work on these directly. If you were to, that the same is true for the SST. If you were to uh, uh, want to process data from level 1A, if you look down at the status at the bottom of my browser window, it's a .bz2 file. So some data comes from this, uh, this archive in a compressed format. That's a bzip2 file. I believe Windows users can um, download the winzip utility, I believe is available for them to decompress various compressed file formats. 
uh, Mac users get that automatically. Linux users get that automatically. Um, but we're not going to really be fooling with the level 1A data directly. So don't worry about that. Just making you aware of that. So if I were to uh, click on this, um, it would download the file. Um, and it may direct you here to log in to your Earth Data account. Uh, you notice I'm logged in, as uh, indicated by the fact that I would have to sign out over here. But I'm finding this redirecting thing a little buggy. Sometimes it doesn't redirect back to where you were. So if if you see the the download progress, you know, download the file and so on, you can just uh, you know use the back capability of your browser and go back to your search window. Um, but having downloaded the data, you're you're basically ready to um, use it with CDAS. Now, I'm just going to add here that this is now where your uh, navigation buttons might be useful. You might go back up, and that gives you back the page you were looking at before of search results. So you may want to have picked another one and download data from it. And so that's where these navigation buttons might come in. If I click the up again, I'm eventually going to get back to the actual search window where I began hunting for data. Okay, so again, you typically pick a category here. It may not matter in that you, when you finally zero in on data uh, on a day, that data for all three uh, file types is available. It helps you with this. Um, it changes. If I go to SST here, then this preview map of composite data for whatever search period I'm looking at will actually reflect a composite of that type of data. So, excuse me, if I hit the SST button instead of the that should right give me now a composite of SST data. You can even see the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico there. So anyhow, that uh, should be a fairly um, uh, clear view of how to use the search tool. You navigate to one of these types, you pick a month, you can pick a day or uh, a week, you know, an eight day window of days. Um, I don't really recommend that you search whole months, but you can. Um, but, uh, you know, just having clicked here on January, my search criteria will become the month of January, so that if I start hunting for swaths in the Gulf of Mexico, I'm going to get a lot of search results. And so um, that may be, I'm here, 13 pages of results. That may or may not be uh, of any advantage than just, you know, narrowing it down to an, uh, a week or so. Uh, but anyhow, hopefully that is a clearer explanation of how to use this search tool.